Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of A Dungeon About. This one starts out with us following up on some of the topics discussed last week. Uh, we talk a bit more about Greyhawk, though I promise not too much. And we also could not help ourselves and had to talk about some more open AI drama involving Scarlett Johansson. This is actually becoming somewhat of a theme for the podcast, the whole AI thing. Uh, after the break, uh, I enjoyed very much hearing Vincent tell me about a new actual play RPG show he discovered called Brunk Hollow by Tabletop Notch. So uh, we had a lot of fun with this episode. It was pretty relaxed. Uh, and so I hope that you will also enjoy listening to this episode of A Dungeon About. have much except a bunch of random points that I want to tell you about. Oh, okay. Okay, can I... I know you have something and I, I told Vincent earlier in the kitchen, okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop talking now, uh -huh. Vincent. You have to tell me this on the podcast. But uh, I want to start. Can I start? Yes, okay. please do. Okay, so I just... Uh, addendum to last time. Uh, it may be that Grey uh, Hawk is not exactly the default setting i'm confused L like last time what okay <laughs> what? Huh? To, to to tell you what i'm talking about <laughs> last yes, time please. we talked about greyhawk being the new default setting for dnd 5.5 the new installment of the beloved role-playing game dungeons and dragons by mm -hmm. wizards of the coast and i don't know but at this point i'm just confused because um mm. people were saying oh you, people are overstating this it's just that Greyhawk is the example that they will use when world building in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Um, okay. And, um, sure. yeah, honestly, the, I, I think that even if they just do that, that's a pretty strong statement. I mean, isn't that exactly the same that they did <laughs> for Forgotten Realms in 5th edition? I'd have to look it up again. I mean, I'd, I mean, what does it mean to be the default setting, right? I don't think at some point in the Dungeon Master's Guide they say, oh this is the default setting. If you don't play this, you're dumb. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Although they might actually say that. I don't know. Um, like, uh, ex except for the your, your dumb part. Sorry, I, I'm just searching for images and I think I found the biggest Greyhawk map ever. Oh, cool. It's loading. I bet they, they've put out new ones uh, uh, since we've talked last time about this. Mm, yeah, possibly, I don't know, yeah. because it's it's gaining traction, Greyhawk. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to spend too much time on this topic. We talked to death last time, which I enjoyed. It was an opportunity also to just, you know, kind of talk about this whole 5.5 thing a little bit, mm -hmm. which I liked. That's all I wanted to bring up. I wonder if there's any more... Uh, big news last week. Oh yeah, one mm -hmm. more thing. <laughs> to, again, about what we talked about last week, the whole open AI thing, right? We yes. here, we are fans of AI, at least we're AI curious. We talk about <laughs> it a bunch, especially uh -huh. in connection to game design, blah, blah, blah. So we talked about the open AI reveal. Uh, so two things happened. <laughs> And mm -hmm. I just want to share them with you. Uh, number one, Scarlett Johansson kind of got wind of oh, the whole thing. Yeah, I Did read you hear about that. this? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, and I'm gonna just say it so yeah, everyone is on correct. the same page. And apparently, Scarlett Johansson made a big press statement, involved her lawyers and stuff, and is, uh, yeah, I I, not exactly suing OpenAI, but at least she's. I think she is. I don't know if a uh, has a suit been filed yet, or did she just send an angry letter with I her lawyers? So, the way I read it is that OpenAI approached her a year ago or so yes. in regards to her using her voice because she's the voice in her, uh, the the film her, and uh, she declined the opportunity, and they still used a voice that is very similar, and now she's suing uh, suing them. Yes, I was just, that's absolutely correct. Uh, uh, I was just not sure, is it at the point where she has filed a suit or is it at the point where they've sent an angry letter with her lawyers and if OpenAI doesn't comply with her demands, uh, then she's going to sue them. Because I know that in the letter that I read, yeah, okay. she was demanding that they sort of release the way that they, the, the method by which they arrived at the voice that they used for Sky, I think is how it's called in their system. Mm -hmm. The vo voice that we we as well heard in, in the last episode. Uh, and I'm being sort of nitpicky. I just don't want to, you know, say the wrong thing. B being scared that then uh, Scar Joe will come after me for. <laughs> 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 yeah. But okay, it's no, 
on yeah. Monday, Scarlett Johansson threatened legal actions. There you go. Yeah, okay, yeah. you're correct. But it, but it, 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 it's nitpicky for sure, but th th you got the gist of it. That's what's going on, right? She's angry at them for the horror thing. And mm -hmm. uh, I think she's got kind of a point there. E yes. <laughs> even though many people, including the original voice actress for Sky, who's like sort of being dragged into this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, are, are saying that actually the voice sort of doesn't really sound like ScarJo, which I agree. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson, especially in her, you know, she's got a sort of very deep, raspy voice. Mm -hmm. It's very remarkable. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of it myself as a great connoisseur of voices. Yeah. I, I, I you agree? I was about to say, you, I mean, I didn't notice it. And if anybody would notice it, it would probably be you because, you know, there's a lot of focus. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I totally like. I would say that about myself. I'm confident in my ability to identify and uh, sort of um, uh, evaluate voices. Yes, uh, and also how 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 listenable they are, how mm -hmm. good they are at reading. If I would want them as an AI assistant and stuff, and I think like I wouldn't super like Scarlett Johansson. She's mm. got a bit too much of that. I spent too much time in my 20s drinking and doing meth <laughs> not saying that Scarjo did that just saying that's what she kind of sounds like mm -hmm. and some people also sound like that naturally without the partying it's just yeah. a bit deep beat, a bit bit raspy and the the sky uh is a bit nicer mm -hmm. and but that's just you know okay that's the objective qualities right um about the the tenor of the voice yeah. but I don't doubt for a second <laughs> <laughs> that they weren't totally going for uh -huh. this association. And by the way, uh, the the guy who I think agrees with me is Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. Don because Solarion, so altruistic open air who only wants to make humanity happy turns out to be stereotypical capitalists <laughs> breaking rules no. for money. Oh, <laughs> this is so not surprising. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Wait till I get to point oh, number God. two, uh -huh. which I think uh, supports what you just said very well. But just, I mean, okay, like, uh, what I was going to say is uh, Sam Altman made a tweet uh, and the entire content of the tweet, and this was after the presentation, mm -hmm. uh, the entire content was her. Now, one word, her. Oh, boy. <laughs> and as you oh, said, <laughs> you know, be, be, they approached Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. yeah. Apparently, the the training for the Sky Voice had been done before they approached Scarlett Johansson. With so it, her voice? No, they never used Scarlett Johansson's voice. Uh -huh. um, they, they did use the, that voice actress. I don't know her name anymore for the Sky Voice. Mm -hmm. um, and this provably has happened before they approached Scarlett Johansson. But, I mean, who gives a fuck, honestly? Because, like, you know, they probably had the plan to make a her voice before they asked Scarlett Johansson. I, like, I would imagine that her is just constantly running in the background yeah. of the entire office. Yeah, <laughs> Sam Owen probably has a poster of that movie in his <laughs> yes. office. Like, it's... Uh -huh. Because it's not, like... That's not a genius hot take. Like, it's not something that's hard to come up with. It's the most obvious choice to use that movie, yeah. uh, right, as an inspiration. And I also think it's fine if they want to do it. It's kind of like a fun marketing gag. But especially with this, with AI these days, everyone just loses their fucking humor immediately when, oh, maybe your voice gets stolen a little bit. I mean, what's yeah. wrong, people? <laughs> come on, live a little. <laughs> yeah, you, you can steal books and newspapers and all that stuff. But voices, not okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of half joking. I don't mm -hmm. really know how I should feel about it, but um, I, I kind of really appreciate Scarlett Johansson because she, she is so, um, she doesn't take no shit from anybody. Because, yeah. yeah, because remember when she sued Disney? Mm -hmm. Like that's like, I mean, Disney is basically stronger than the FBI in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, you know, you don't. Yes. You don't. You can go after the state, but you don't go after Disney, especially if your like job and career depend on it to some extent, mm -hmm. as is the case with with Carl Johansson. Yeah, well, yes, but also like she's probably one of the better, if not best, paid yeah. actresses in the world right now. She's so. big enough that she can do it, right? <clears throat> yeah. But I've, I just generally, I like her attitude. Like, I've seen her in interviews as well, just sort of tell a guy to stuff it, basically, because <laughs> he <laughs> asks weird <laughs> questions. Yeah, rightfully so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I was going to say, and she does it without uh, seeming like a sort of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. appetite actress who's mm -hmm. sort of 
developing sort of princess-like traits. Not at all. She just seems very professional. Uh, and I sort of... That's good. It's yeah, not how I, I would do it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no. I would just a answer all the questions because I have no shame, probably, um, yeah. and no media training. Either that, or just leave once it gets too bad, maybe. Uh -uh. I mean, or how Jason Momoa does it? Just throw him through a window? <laughs> no, I think he just <laughs> stares at you and snarls. Uh, and like, no, that's not that, actually that true. That would also work. <laughs> that, yeah. no, I, there's an interview with that guy where someone, like, the interview asks him, like, um, yeah, so. Um, you know, go, looking back at Game of Thrones, you know, nowadays, those scenes oh with boy. Daenerys and stuff, uh, would you do that any differently today? And mm -hmm. <laughs> Jason Momoa is like, no. <laughs> 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 and then he, the interview goes on, and, and uh -huh. he's like, mm. you know, he gets real quiet. Yeah. You know, and the interviewer keeps oh asking, boy. but doesn't get answers. Mm -hmm. And eventually Jason Momoa is just like, you know, that question you were asked earlier, I didn't like the way you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know who uh -huh. I would rather piss off, <clears throat> Jason Momoa or Scarlett Johansson. I think both of those that uh, will give you a bad time no matter what. Yeah. 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 In any yes. <laughs> so then <laughs> it gets better. Hold on. Okay. Yes, yes. So well, then open more. Sam Altman did that, mm -hmm. you know, and then turned around and made a big deal, which they announced with News Corp of Rupert Murdoch fame, you know, which includes Fox News and I think The Sun and all those, you know, news corporations that we love mm -hmm. slash S. I don't love them at all. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's like, um, but they, those apparently, they're working together with them, I guess. Now, that's a partnership that's been announced. I honestly thought it was like an April Fool's joke because uh, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't know how that's going to, I, I don't even know, man. What are they, like, how are they working together? Just I think AI? they get data, uh -huh. which they want, like news data, consumer, that's all what they want. There's a huge mm -hmm. beast that consumes data. Yeah. Uh, and Rupert Murdoch and News Corp get um, open AI services, I guess, to, to make cool uh, news articles and whatever they produce, right? I'm sure, you know, they, they deal in lots of text, mm -hmm. right? They can use open AI services. And it's just, it's... It's it's crazy. I don't know what to say. Um, there was a at least in those sort of AI communities which are frequent, uh, the reception was not very good. Like um, yeah. even the usual open AI fanboys were like in droves, basically saying, "Okay, unsubscribed." Like that's what the fuck. Like mm -hmm. that's not. Holy shit. I thought about, for a laugh, buying an open AI sweater and a cup because I, you know, <laughs> sound like a yes. shill here. Okay, now I uh -huh. really don't want to do that. Uh. Like, that's it's really not a good look, especially with their entire, like, super alignment uh, team. I believe I've talked about that. I may have just talked about yeah, that to you, you. You talked to me about it. Yeah, not in the podcast, but don't. I'm not going to go into all that stuff. They just recently left before all this stuff went down. Mm hmm and so, tell me again, what is super alignment? So the, the alignment team is, these are the guys who like censor the AI and make sure it doesn't turn into Skynet and kill us all. You know, <laughs> yeah. that, that was their they job. And they all left. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that, that, that's yes. good. Uh -huh. And now Altman is tweeting her and like doing deals with Rupert Murdoch. And Love so, <laughs> yeah, your whole, like, yeah, they're turning into the super capitalist machine. That's, yeah, right on the money, Don Salarian. It's like... Yeah, I get the same impression. Mm -hmm. And I'm, yeah, okay. I, I, you know, I feel, vin I observed this with great interest, obviously. And I'm impressed, I'm still impressed with their technical demo of that sky thing. Yeah. Um, but I also feel very vindicated in like being interested in local AIs and running these piece of shit models on my graphics card. Not actually piece of shit. Still very mm -hmm. impressive, but, you know, not GPT. N not GPT O, not not four O level, probably mm -hmm. at the same level as GPT three point five at this point, but just already good. Yeah, and it's getting better. And yada yada, I don't want to yeah. brag about my <laughs> local <laughs> abilities. It's not <laughs> interesting to anyone. I just wanted to. I don't know. We talked about it last week. I mm -hmm. thought I'd bring it up. It's a nice follow up, and yeah. like the world is sort of crazy right now. Yeah, it's, it's just going so fast. Yeah, like we we talked about. Um, I, I watched the. John Stewart interview uh, with uh, 
head of the uh, is it the FCC? The, the whoever does the monopoly uh, stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Might be the FCC. Um, and th that was really eye opening because she was talking about um, a great interview. By the way, go watch it. Um, <clears throat> It was uh, interesting because she talked about how we are still struggling with basically the the rapid advancement from Web 2.0. Yeah. Now that we have right, we are now struggling yeah. with uh, these giant corporations like Google and Amazon and uh, Win, uh, Microsoft and all these um, different actors that do stuff that is morally questionable at best. <laughs> sure. And um, they can't really be restrained because so they do so much and are so powerful and um, yeah and they've captured <clears throat> the regulators right yeah and they influence so many people so if, if google uh, next year says yeah we're going offline like that would again change the world probably <laughs> that's like collapse yes yeah, that is <laughs> that's at least some amount of collapse. you can't do that google yeah like seriously yeah uh, and that was really interesting because then she said, okay, th that that happened really quickly. Yeah. Um, the web 2.0. And now we have AI and AI is going at like 100 times the speed. Yeah. So uh, sure, it, it's new technology. It might change jobs or um, yeah, make some jobs unnecessary anymore. For but sure. It, it's just, it's going so fast and we have no idea to really regulate it. And yeah. we have no way of regulating it because legislation takes time and um, analyzing stuff takes time. I mean, I can, I, I like, you got to stop me. I can talk about this for a long time. And I know <laughs> this, this is actually not AI Dungeon About, although I've thought about naming it that. <laughs> it's a Dungeon About, not yes. AI. But yeah, because yeah. the only problem is there is already AI Dungeon, right? So that's, yeah, yeah. the name is taken. Yeah. But they've just passed, um, I guess last week, they passed, the Senate in California passed an, a sort of AI regu regulation law not sure what the name of it is. Um, that doesn't mean it's in law yet. It still needs to go through some other, I don't know, cal the California law system, but mm -hmm. another sort of chamber needs to pass it and the, the governor needs to sign it. It's not official yet, but it went through the Senate uh, and it put some heavy regulations on um, like basically open source models. It's very bad for open source AI models except that it's a ridiculous proposal that is essentially unenforceable. So <laughs> nobody... Sorry, I was just looking for the video. Here we hear the senator. No, this is... Uh, I was just looking for the interview I've uh, talked about. And obviously oh, okay. YouTube is auto-playing everything. Oh. So uh, it, it was the FC, FTC... Chair, oh, there you go. Lena okay. Khan. Is that the Federal Trade Commission? It sounds about right, yes. All right. Uh, yeah, that's good. I can put it in the show notes. Um, the link to the video, um, and maybe I'll link the the law that was passed. But it's I can't give you the details right now. But it's like it was, you know, saying oh, if you have a model that is of a certain size, mm -hmm. then um, like you can only uh, like um, run that or offer that to people with like heavy sort of censorship and other stuff. I'm sort of messing it up now, but sure. the idea behind it is, oh, we're going to make it so difficult, mm -hmm. uh, for you to run these models because of all the regulations we put on them. It becomes basically impossible or just not financially viable. Uh, and this is of course in the interest of the big corporations who are mm -hmm. lobby lobbying really, really hard right now to basically uh, outlaw open source uh, AI. Like Sam mm. Altman is championing this mm -hmm. in Washington and uh, it's in the interest of the big corporations, right? They want, uh, they want, uh, they want Scarlett Johansson behind their big walls <laughs> uh, so that only they yes. can offer Scarlett's uh -huh. dulcet, slightly raspy, in my opinion, voice <laughs> to the masses. They don't want you to run her yourself mm -hmm. on your GPU. Of um, I mean, it's true. Like, I'm making j jokes about the ScarJo thing, yeah. but it's that's clearly what they want. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just... I, I don't think it's going to happen just because it's unenforceable, just like mm -hmm. this law. And it's such a it's a law that was clearly written by people who are completely out of their depth, like who've heard about mm -hmm. AI from their grandchildren mm -hmm. and like yeah, yeah. are unable to write laws that mm -hmm. are effective. Yeah. 
at least from what I can gather. Yeah, that's but anyway, a problem. But uh, yeah, there's lots of problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, talk talks enough about AI now. Yeah. Fight scenes, lots of them. The time of heroes returns. And there's the, the picture of the f three people and the frog person. I don't even know why I like this genre so much. I guess I just love the stupidity of heroes too and just <laughs> amassing an, an army of literally 10,000 skeletons, mm -hmm. which would then all be compressed into one guy on the hex grid. <laughs> and uh -huh. and he had, because the attack value would scale, he would have oh like God. incredible attack power and literally mm -hmm. the, the skeleton army would kill everything in one hit. But <sighs> they had army. awful defense. So if the enemy got the hit in first, mm -hmm. instantly 8,000 of your skeletons would die. <laughs> like, if that guy gets hit by, like, I don't know, a, a mid-tier nice. unit, uh -huh. like a griffin or whatever. You're, let's say your enemy has 12 griffins mm -hmm. and you have 10,000 skeletons. <laughs> oh, boy, do you better get the first hit in because otherwise those 8,000 skeletons are gone. Nice. Reminds me of Warhammer. I think I told you about this. This necromancer right. army. Yeah. Where you could, in Warhammer 2, there's a way where you can skill that skeletons don't have... Uh, that, what is it called? Where, the, Flesh? No. The, <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, usually you have to pay uh, money every turn f to uh, upkeep. That's right. The word. Yeah. Um, and you can skill that skeletons don't have to uh, yeah, that's, upkeep. that's dumb. So, like, what would they spend it on? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, just milk, I guess. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah. uh, so you can have like an infinite amount of armies, basically. And it doesn't matter. Like, you can face the best defended, perfect dwarven fortress. And you just bring up six armies of skeletons and just throw bodies at them until they are all exhausted, the dwarves are yeah. And then you just you slowly push them inside. <laughs> but that's awesome. Own. That's I mean, heroes too, right? I make fun of them. But the, the, uh -huh. both of these things, they <laughs> transport that fantasy of the necromancer yes. who just has endless mm -hmm. armies of trash <laughs> that they throw at you. <laughs> <laughs> but then, Vincent, what happens if the, if the dwarven town that's being besieged, if their mages get together and, and cast mass osteoporosis <laughs> <laughs> on those milk-deprived well, <laughs> skeletons? To, time to dual-wield these milk containers. Yes. <laughs> 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 Necromancers They're, learn milk rain for yeah, exactly that they, reason. They, they bring the, the sort of fire wagons with pumps <laughs> that <just> spray <laughs> milk <laughs> over their skeleton yeah. armies. Ah, oh, glorious. No, is crumbling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our geriatric <laughs> army of oh, skeletons is, uh -huh. it has great bone health. They, they do resistance training. <laughs> anyway, this is so dumb. Yeah. Um, I think you had something that is a bit more wholesome. Yes. <laughs> Whimsical <laughs> and wholesome. Yes. Give yes. me something uh, I can cling to, Vincent, for security. Talking about, uh, you know, this, this dungeon about, and I uh, watched, after talking to you about uh, different D&D &D shows. Yes, actual uh, play shows, yes, right? Yeah. Uh, like Critical Role. I'm um, interested, and this is what I stopped Vincent in the kitchen from telling, so now I really yes. want to hear it. <laughs> Uh, so we both like Critical Role, and uh, with Campaign Three, we sort of um, we aren't really into it. So I uh, looked at some other stuff, uh, some other shows, and what I watched last week uh, was. Let me bring it up. Does that work? Yes, uh, Brunk Hollow. Uh, by Brunk Hollow. Brunk Hollow. Yes. How do you write that? Uh, B R U N K. H O L L O W. Okay. Literally, how you said it. Yeah, Brunkhole. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, which is the name of the campaign, uh, and also the city they stay in. Or uh, the the channel is Tabletop Notch. And it's a good name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they did a campaign before that, which I haven't watched, and I only watched I think three episodes so far, maybe four. Um, 
and it it's sort of in a way D and D uh, critical role light. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Because they only they're only half voice actors. Uh, no, they are actors. I ah, think okay. all of them are in some. I don't know if all of them are actors, but all of them are in the acting space. Okay. Uh, I think the DM is mostly a producer, and maybe director, something like that. Sure. Um, but they all do like improv theater and uh, or, or uh, smaller roles, acting and stuff like that. Anyone I would know? <clears throat> I don't think so. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I, I found them on YouTube and I uh, they started this campaign quite recently. The first episode is eight huh. months ago was released eight months ago and uh, th they are live streaming them as well i haven't caught a live stream yet mm -hmm. but um they play fifth edition they play fifth edition nice. but uh they have an interesting setting because it's without it's not without magic mm -hmm. but it's uh the the players and most of the the, the civilized people are non-magical um so they only play like fighters and rogues And monks and barbarians. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not even paladins or rangers. Right. Um, and uh, the, the episode, the first episode, starts with uh, with their track to uh, Brunk Hollow, which is sort of a, uh, similar to the West Marches uh, scenarios. Uh, it's it's a, a, a small city at the the edge of civilization, basically. Um, I'm excited. This yeah. whole thing about no magic. You know, if it was like. If if I was the player, I'd say no. Go fuck yourself, DM. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Is this some kind of power fantasy? Uh -huh. Where are you? But as a viewer, you know, yeah, that might be exactly the thing that makes Fifth Edition interesting again to me. Because mm -hmm. it, and even as a player, I have to admit, it is a bit much. Like with the whole magic stuff, that I just I'd still want to be able to play a wizard. Is my mm -hmm. whole point. But yeah, if you, of course, yeah, that, that's just me, right? <laughs> yeah. I, no, and surprising oh, yeah, no, no one. <clears throat> but I would be totally okay if the DM told me, yeah, but like, okay, you're a wizard, but you only get half the spell slots you normally have. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but you, you go cry about it, like, but that's how it is. And I would be okay with that because, yeah, it is a bit much in fifth edition. Mm -hmm. But since I don't have to play and I just watch them, <laughs> yeah, that that sounds interesting. Yeah, uh, and. Again, there, there is magic, just not on the player side. So right. on, on the way, uh, it's also it's sort of lightly Western inspired. Um, mm, very good. Fan of Westerns here, as we've yeah, that, established. Mm, I don't know. Maybe it's just my impression. Maybe it is not really. But the, the first scene uh, the DM invites them into yeah. is uh, uh, are three carriages. Um, and they travel to Broncolo. And of course, they are... Uh, stopped by bandits and um, oh. that's already an interesting scene i need something like this in my life <laughs> just this <laughs> simple joy of adventure i'm serious vincent <laughs> i know because it's uh, yeah i don't know i was about to shit on critical role again but i'm not gonna because what we need is a bit more positivity Yeah, I and can't stand all this negativity. How are the players? Do you like the performances and stuff? Uh yes, they are um, it, it's very performance heavy especially um like they they start really action heavy with the the um, bandits and then it, towards the end there's some magic that happens um and as soon as they get into the actual city of broncolo they spend a lot of time just interacting with npcs and with a lot of time i mean like two episodes oh that's a lot that's wait, wait how long are, is an episode uh around three hours yeah that's a lot <laughs> yeah but it's also it's a lot of setup they uh, sure I, i was personally reminded of the beginning of uh kotor where you just you know you, oh. you just collect a lot of quests basically yeah but at least in kotor there's also like fighting occasionally mm -hmm. that's true yeah but they d is there any drama in those setup episodes of tabletop notch uh i Brunkolo. yes it is Um, not intense. That's a very hesitant. It is not intense <laughs> drama because okay. I think the DM was setting up some drama and the players didn't really go into the drama. As oh, much. okay. Um, they they chose to stay on the uh, lighter side and not interfere. Just watch for the moment. Uh, okay. Is there any? I mean, I think you've already um, got me sort of intrigued. Mm -hmm. But is there any sort of central narrative conceit, some big problem they have to solve, some big danger, or is it just West Marches 
go get treasure or die, which, you know, I'd be fine with. I'm, you know, just asking. Uh, I think so far it's set up in a um, way that it's more character focused. So mm -hmm. it, it, there's not an overarching plot of saving the world in some way. Um, though maybe that's possible. I don't know. Sure. Um, but so far it seems more that each character is their, their own individual uh, bundle of motivations. Yeah. And uh, th they work together. But it's um, not hesitantly, but uh, they are slowly getting together as a group. Sure. And um, I still have not figured out what their individual um, motivations are so far. They have been mm -hmm. sort of hesitant in telling that. Yeah, that uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> players tend to do that. Yeah, but I, I think that what they are doing really well is setting it up. Right. So they're not hesitant in, in giving the the audience scenes where th their character's weak uh, weirdness or uh, motivation yeah. is shown it's just not okay here's my motivation uh, card and now you read it and sure then we can move on to w what are we doing guns. playing burning yeah. wheel no <laughs> yes. we don't know what our motivations are <laughs> you can't just say that <laughs> yes. it's, 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 it's like asking a sexual partner what, what they like Ugh. you can't like just talk about these things uh -huh. it's the <laughs> what you don't have a card i have a card <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly uh -huh. um, Carry yeah, it with me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in my wallet, of course, yeah. next to my organ door. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, I mean dumb. that's much more intimate than the other. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So they're like it's a ragtag group of adventurers, mm -hmm. you know, down on their luck, throwing in yes. with each other mm -hmm. to like get just get by doing odd jobs but they all have a heart of gold and some baggage they carry around and That's then cool. they the, the dm sort of starts mining their backstory for good mm -hmm. adventure yeah i mean yeah. that you know, that's basically a campaign, too, of Critical Role, my favorite campaign. Yes. So, And uh, I would also say that the DM does a fantastic job. I, I think he has not repeated the voice so far. And oh, wow. there were a lot of NPCs. All right, I'm um, going to check it out. You got me sold. And, and then we'll now, now they have started venturing out into the wilderness uh, on a uh, mission All right. for the local mine, mining lord. And, um, and that's... Uh, it's pretty good. There are griffins and blink dogs and <laughs> oh boy! You need to say no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already um, intrigued, and I will probably watch it if I find the time. That's a problem with these things; it takes so much ta fucking yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then just, I will I, tell you all about why it sucks. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just it's kidding. Like, true. It's just um, I, I tend it, to be nitpicky. I give it a bit of time. I um, I found the the city episode at the beginning a bit long, but yeah. I think that's just yeah, you've it's warned set me. up and it will hopefully pay off afterwards. All right, and you also watch, no, okay, no. just just one small critique Please. because they are streaming and because they are rather small, um, they, uh, for example, name all the uh, subscribers, the new subscribers at oh, the yeah. beginning and in the middle after the pause or the break. Um, and they have a lot of intro, sure. uh, just retelling what happened last time, and mm -hmm. then uh, an actual like visual intro. And you can easily skip like the first fifteen minutes of each episode. episode yeah, but is... uh, sure. Uh, but maybe I don't want to do that because sure. I mean the intro. Yeah, maybe. But like just, the other for me, it was a bit long and just a lot of reading and a lot of um, talking about things that I just watched basically. But yeah, it's always a problem if you watch these back to back, yeah, right? Yeah, if yeah. you had a week in in between. Mm -hmm. But sure, I mean you can just. Seek slide forward a yes. little bit. I was going to say that I kind of miss a little bit the jank and the lower production value and the charm of the sort of rawness of, you know, mm -hmm. early critical role oh, where yeah, they, they would have yeah. viewers order their meals into the studio mm -hmm. and stuff. And Yeah. I mean, okay. The interesting thing here is they have high production value. Yeah. But there's also a lot of jank. No, that's so, cool, because um, what I don't need is early Critical Role sound quality, which was yes. garbage. Uh -huh. Yeah, th they have um, solid cameras, and they have... Uh, th uh, the, the DM obviously put a lot of work into making um, a, a special shop menu, for example, that he literally drew, or somebody yeah, drew, awesome. I assume he did. I love um, it. And stuff like that. Um, 
but then there's also like there was a moment in the last episode I watched where um, they were in the this fight overview, like the cam camera setup, and then he wanted to switch to another one and it he tried it and it didn't work <laughs> and it just it, like it took a minute or so to figure out and uh, <laughs> one of the players who apparently does all the the technical or some of the technical aspects had to jump behind the DM screen and just show him which buttons to press. Oh, but that's so. just, it's so charming. It's yeah, real. It's uh -huh. like, yeah, none of this is a negative in yeah. my view. I love that. Um, yeah, sounds good. So that's Brunk Hollow mm -hmm. with Tabletop Notch. Yeah. Tabletop Very interesting. Notch is the channel. Uh, and you had another one? Or do you uh, just watch that the one? The other one I haven't looked at. Oh, okay. Yet. Then that's because not these it. episodes are three, yes, three yes. hours long. <laughs> it is a problem. Yeah. Yes. It's true. Uh -huh. um, yeah, all right. But well, that, that's cool. Uh, and maybe we'll talk about the other one another time. I'll probably yeah. also have uh, more to talk about in the RPG world next mm -hmm. week. We'll, we'll see. Um, other than that, we don't have to talk uh, if we don't have more topics. I think that was already quite fun. Yeah, um, I, I do. Okay, this is not yes. podcast material and stuff. I just wanted to look at a game with you real quick. And okay, that's always sort of dumb to put on the podcast, but um, th thanks for listening, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the A Dungeon About podcast. We record live usually every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central European time on Twitch, twitch.tv slash he makes me play underscore live. You can also watch some of our Let's Plays and other videos we create on the He Makes Me Play YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash at he makes me play. And you can also follow us on Twitter at makes underscore play. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.